Hello everyone, my name is Wei Ling Gu and I'm a Solutions Architect on Amazon Selling Partner API team. This video series is intended for any Selling Partner API developers that want to integrate listings use case to their product. To create a new product or list an existing product, you need to first understand the data requirement for listing a product on Amazon. In this series, I will show you how you can use Product Type Definitions API to programmatically access data requirements for a specific product type in the Amazon catalog. There will be two videos in this series. This is part one of the series where we will walk through the key concepts of the Product Type JSON schema and how to read the JSON schema to get all the requirements necessary for submitting a product successfully. Before we get started, let's go through the workflow. Today, we're using the workflow of listing an item that doesn't exist in the Amazon catalog as an example. In this workflow, you will start by confirming that the item doesn't exist in the catalog, identifying the appropriate product type to use, retrieve product JSON schema using product type definitions API, create and submit product JSON, and listen to listings item notifications after submission. The focus of today's video are the stages of retrieving and understanding product type JSON schema, product type schema's creation and validation, and then submitting listings items request. If you're not yet familiar with the other stages or other workflows, I have attached the link to a full listings workflows webinar in the description below. Be sure to check it out. There are a few terminologies I would like to share. The very first things to know when trying to understand SP API product type JSON schema are JSON schema and meta schema. JSON schema is a schema that can be used to validate the format of JSON payload. It provides a way to standardize and define expectations for your JSON data. And meta schema is a schema that defines the structure of JSON schema. Think about a specific JSON schema as an instance of meta schema, and the JSON schema has to follow the rules of meta schema. The product type JSON schema returned from product type definition API has its own meta schema called Amazon product type definition meta schema. This meta schema is a good place to go to understand the structure of product type JSON schema. The Amazon product type meta schema is an extension of JSON schema draft 201909. It includes the standard JSON schema 2019-09 vocabulary and the custom vocabulary defined by SP API. If you would like to see the custom vocabulary, you can find them on the documentation site. I have attached a link to the documentation page in the description of the video. To get the data requirements of a specific product type, you will start by calling the product type definition API with the product type you intend to use. On the right hand side, it is an example of a response from calling product type definition API. The response includes information about the product type such as meta schema, requirements, locale, property groups, and marketplace. The property schema is the one we want to focus on. Following the link field in the schema property, we will be able to retrieve a copy of the JSON schema we need to follow to submit product to the Amazon catalog. A product type JSON schema received from the link provided by product type definition API will be similar to what is displaying on the right hand side. There are a few commonly seen keywords. Schema shows the specification of the JSON schema. Type describes the type of data expected, such as marketplace ID is expected to be a string. Required includes an array of property keys that represent the property that will be required in the JSON payload to be submitted. In the example here, property item name is a required attribute for our product JSON payload. If we don't provide item name in our payload, we will receive a validation error. Def and ref works together for reusability. Def defines a subschema that can be referenced within the current schema. Ref references the subschema or another schema. For example, you will see that marketplace ID is defined at the root of schema and reused across product type schema in different properties. Moving on, properties are an object that contains schema used to validate each specific property. And if the property submitted in your payload doesn't match the schema requirements, you will receive an error in the response. There's also keyword editable. 
It indicates that if you can edit the property after submission. If editable is false, that means you won't be able to update this property's value after submission. In this example, country of origin property cannot be edited after submission. So it is something you need to be mindful of prior to submitting. Lastly but not least, the all of keyword in the product type JSON schema describes all the additional conditions that need to be met for this specific product type. If you have added all the data in the required array in your JSON payload, but you still receive error of missing attributes in your put listings item response, chances are that there are additional conditions you need to look into in all of keyword. Let's take a closer look at how to understand the additional conditions. Here is one of the conditions from the luggage product type JSON schema. Sometimes you will see all of. That means all conditions in an array must be valid. Similarly, if there's any of, that means it will be true if any of the conditions are met. On the right hand side, you can see there are two objects in any of. That means if either one of the conditions is met, then this any of would be true. And if there's one of, that means only one and exactly one of the conditions needs to be met for it to return true. And not means it must not be valid against the given schema. Enum means that value of the property is restricted to a fixed set of values. And in some cases, you will see keyword enum name. Make sure you use the value in enum instead of enum name. Let's take a look at the second property condition on the right hand side with these keywords in mind. What it means is that to make this condition true, parentage level value must not be parent. Sometimes you will see if then else, which means some schema is only applicable based on the outcome of the schema under if. If we look at the schema on the right hand side as a whole with if then in mind, what it indicates is that if parentage level is empty or parentage level is not parent, then department item type name, list price, and model name will be required. If you are looking for more help to understand the JSON schema, I attached a link to the documentation page from jsonschema.org on how to understand JSON schema in the video's description. That wraps up the first part of our video. If you find it helpful, please like and subscribe. I will see you in part two, a demo of creating product JSON payload for your listing use case. Happy coding from all of us at Amazon Selling Partner API team. Thanks for watching.